Hello, welcome back to Project Cherokee. Just a quick update. Got a few bits and bobs I'm going to do today. Um, I may I may not record some of it. We'll just see how things go because uh, I'm, I'm still open and there's people coming in and out. But I'll swing the camera around. I'll show you what I've been doing. So the grill's out. That's actually round the side of the garage so it doesn't get damaged. Fantastic design, this car. Four little torques that come out and two hold each headlamp in. So it's great. So this side's being converted. That side I'm about to do. So I thought I would leave them in as a comparison. So the grill comes off nice and easy. And what I've done is I've upgraded to LED Night Eye, if anybody wants to know the brand, uh, headlight bulbs. These are an H4, so they do your low beam and your high beam. And the only thing is I've marked with these is top and bottom because they need to go in the correct way. If they don't, the beam pattern will be all messed up. And also there, you've already seen these probably on the other videos. Two seconds. <coughs> um, these are just your standard 501 Osram. Don't know if that'll zoom in. Probably won't. The Osram, not your cheap rubbish from eBay. They're about 15 quid for two. Um, so side light and headlamp. As you can see, the ones that have come out are... Pretty burnt out, standard looking. And as you can see, that's just completely black. It didn't look terrible when they were switched on. So, what I'll do is, I'll show you what they look like on the sides, on dip beam, and we'll do a bit of a comparison. So, first of all, I'm just going to push this mirror in. We'll do the side lights. And as you'll see straight up, that just looks like some little glow worm in there. And that, you can see it actually catching the lens. It's that bright. So you can be seen at the same time, not blinding people. And it's just, if you stand back a bit, to me, that's... It isn't blue, by the way. It's completely daylight white, just how the camera picks that up. So that's that on. I think you'll quite agree that is a good upgrade. And then you're onto your headlights. Dip beam. As you can see on here, pointing on there, your little candle kind of glow. And that's your nice pure white, bearing in mind, total daylight yeah and again just as looking at it from that angle like a glow worm in this as you can see but they really have you've got to work and get the beam pattern correct as you can see there's still a nice beam pattern i need to put it on the wall to check it up to there the same as what that has you've got your beam pattern so it's important i'm going to adjust these so they're down on the lowest setting so they don't blind people um and what you've got to do here I'll have to just try and show you through the point of the bonnet. If you can just see the high beam going up and down, you see the bit where that T cut is on my tool cabinet? Up and down. Make sure they're in the right way, otherwise the bulbs will be pointing far too high up. But at the same time, it works great for flashing. People in or out of junctions, whatever, it's an instant. If you look at the de delay, flash, flash. See, it's instant on, instant off. Instant on, instant off, before the other ones even had time to uh, cut in. I will say, I'm just going to swing this round. I will say, before anybody yaps, yes, I know the rules myself. You're not really meant to put LED uh, lights into non-LED units. I am actually in the process of buying these units with the little projector lenses already built into them and your side light and daylight running light goes around the edge. But for now, I already have these bulbs here, bought and paid for. I am spending the time to do the proper beam, beam patterns on them. Uh, I MOT'd the car last week with obviously as you can see the standard bulbs which I'm going to remove on the other side and put in so yes I know before anybody says oh the blind people the blind people if you fit them incorrectly and I've had this argument time and time before with people on forums and I'm right and I'm sticking to my point on this one you put this car with the correct the correct beam pattern the correct like kind of setup not Mickey Mouse doing it and that's set perfectly fine on the level. These lights are no more blinding, even though they're not type approved. Like, technically speaking, these bulbs, are, you should not use LED or HID bulbs in lenses which are meant for halogen bulbs. I will totally say that, and I'll make a disclaimer on that. But, as everybody knows, the facts and figures, just because they're not type approved, but they're set up correctly... I would like to you to stand with a beam setter or a light, what's that word called again? Luminums tester. You put these on this car properly set up, up against, on a dark road, a brand new, say for example, BMW with the laser light technology or all these new cars you see with LED lights and you tell me which one 
is, or isn't blinding you. Yes, these ones, when you set them in correctly, people on driveways not knowing what they're doing or using beam testers, yes, it will blind you. But I tell you what, for an absolute fact, all these new cars, I don't know about use, but when I'm out on the road and I've got some new Audi, BMW, Mercedes coming towards me, not with main beam on, with the standard lights on, they absolutely blind you. Especially when they're hitting bumps. Yes, I know on official ones, you've got all of... I mean, I know this stuff. You've got all the little actuators on each suspension arm which adjusts the bulb beam pattern. But no matter how good they are, they are not perfect. And you can be driving along, especially bumpy roads or single carriageway roads where traffic's coming directly towards you. Them are, when they're hitting bumps in the road, absolutely blind you. And they are super, super super bright so whether or not they're type approved or not officially for legal reasons i would still argue my point and i would actually compare it to say that, that fiesta over there uh, that if it's getting dark by the time i finish the night and i've got this one done i might even do a little test with that fiesta has got a, a very high-end upgrade on the headlights it's got the special um led system built in and i'll set these ones up on this car and I'll set the ones up on that one, and we'll do a side-by-side -side test, and we'll do a, a, a beam pattern test on the wall, and we'll see. I don't know, because I don't think it'll be dark by the time I'm done. It might be, but if it is, we'll try. So anyways, on to what else I'm doing. Doing the bulbs. Switching. Um, the, like I mentioned, there was nothing wrong with the air filter on this car. At all. There's nothing wrong with it. But uh, I've got this. This is a genuine Jeep one. Marley original equipment. This is what you get from Jeep. It was like eight quid on eBay. It was going to cost me like twenty pound for this. So I just thought, do you know what it is? Heck, to heck with it. I'm just going to put it in because, as you know, I've done the spark plugs, done the oil and filter. Oh, I've done another flush on the gearbox. Uh, like like what I call it, a sump dump. Fifth, uh, a liter and a half out, liter and a half back in to the same level. But there we go. There's the pot of Marley filter. This is what you get from the factory if you want to order one of these from Jeep. Um, so we'll put that in. The one that's in, like I've mentioned, I'm totally going against me will here. I'm changing something that's practically brand new, but it's just a, a Crossland filter, and I like things to be original equipment. It's getting a little bit dirty, I suppose. So we're going to do that, change the filter while I've got that off. Um, like I've mentioned, we're going to do the headlights. I'll do a quick demonstration of how you set these up. And what else am I going to do? Yes, the air conditioning. I've, I'll show you that on a separate video. Probably at the end of this video, we'll, um, I'm going to do a regas on the aircon with the stuff that I've got here, which works brilliantly. So I'm just going to pause it now, get the headlamp lamp, it's already, as you can see, out um, on the bench, and I'll just show you roughly what you've got to do. Right, so that's the headlamp out on the bench. It's just simply two torques, that one and that one, and then they just hinge out, nice and simple. This one's had a repair done. Um, which is quite common where the bulb holders burn out. So with LEDs, just always make sure you put it in first. And I've already done it. Go in and check that it works. And then in this case, it just pops in the bottom of the lamp unit, uh, and the rubber creates the seal. Um, obviously, you just unbolt the headlamp leveling device and the four pin. I've put some silicone grease in there uh, for the H4 headlamp. So that's the headlamp on the bench. Like I've mentioned, the standard ones go in and twist, but that one's obviously burnt out. That's the this, the side lamp again, all black and burnt out. These have just got a rubber boot that you just simply remove, take that off, and then you expose the bulb, which you just simply pull the two together like that, and that, then pump, pump the bulb, pop the bulb out. I'm trying not to get silicon grease on my fingers. Uh, as you can see, that bulb isn't too bad. Uh, we'll put that to one side. And this is your LED H4. Night Eye, these are absolutely fantastic. I think they only cost about 15, 20 quid. And these have been in various cars. Um, they've got a little shroud you've got to remove. And as you can see, there's a little fan unit in the back, which the way these are designed, these headlamps works fantastic. So what you do is you just remove that shroud off, which I'll do now, which leaves you with this. And you just simply pop that in as the same way you took the old one out. It can only go in one way. Just make sure you do it correctly. That goes in. And then you just fasten it down. I'm trying to look through the phone and do this at the same time. It's actually a lot easier if I just use my eyes. There we go, that. And bring that one across and in as so. So now you can see you've got the shroud in place. 
Then all you've got to do is, is just put the rubber unit back over the top, push it in. The only thing is, with this not being standard, so to speak, you've got to just manipulate that edge there around that bit that sticks up there. So you just push it on. And that's it pushed on there now, so it's sealed around the edge and sealed around where the bulb holder goes in. And just note, there's two little slots in each side of the holder, and then two little pegs on there which go in so you've just got to put that down and put it in but what you this is where if you haven't used these bulbs before you need to be careful you notice i've marked a t there and there's a you probably won't see it on the other one it's down there um a t which means top so as long as this is at the top of the headlamp i.e that's the top of this one so i want this red section to be as close to the top as i can because that means that when you do the main beam function what will happen you'll find is it'll actually point it down or to the side, where on these bulb, this bulb for some reason, this top section here, as you can see, there's three SMDs in it. This top one, or it must be one of the bottom ones, do the function. So I've just found if you keep this red section at the top, when you alter your high beam on and off, it will keep it the right way. And it does tell you that they can be adjusted. So we'll just pop this in, and then it's just a quarter of a turn, and it locks it into place. And that's it in. You'll know when it goes in because it just drops slightly and then you just give it a little quarter of a turn. So as you can see, that's as close to the top as you can get it. So you want the red at the top. And then it goes in, there's a quarter of a turn. There's a little fan there, so these work perfectly. So they'll ventilate themselves nicely. And obviously, like I mentioned, the bulb's got to go in at the bottom. Normally you'll put this unit in a quarter turn, but with this idea, it's already been slightly damaged. So that's been modified really the only thing you got to be careful is there's a little peg that goes into here then the light unit comes across and then you just put the two torques in this little bit here goes in to locate it then you just simply plug that into your standard bulb holder 501 in pop it in screw it on and i'll show you i'll put it back together you don't need to watch us wrestling on with it because it's simple as i've just showed you that peg goes in pushes in two torques and we'll get them on and then we'll compare them and there we go, I've got them fitted, as you can see, they don't look any different to normal. We'll switch them on, and we'll do a quick test. Hopefully this has been untested so they'll both work. So there we go. There's a strange noise going on there. Oh, it'll be the headlamp levelling device. I'll have to look at that. And pull on. there we go. Nice pure white light. This lens I'm going to try cleaning. I've already done that one, you can't really see when the lights are on. And now as you can see when you flash main beam, instant and it's flashing to the top naturally, which is what you want, and off. But now just to do a quick flash, like to let somebody in, instant. That's where these come in very handy. So yeah, you can see that lens, it's a bit cloudy. And if you notice that one, it's not perfect, but it's a lot better. And all you use is turtle wax, a spray compound, cutting compound, and a little sandpaper pad. And to finish it off, I put a layer of wax over. You're meant to use a sealing compound, but I'm not finished doing this yet. So, I'm going to quickly show you what you do with that now. So first up, it's just a spray. To be honest, I think this stuff's just water, deionized water. Spray it on the light. Full surface of it. Get a little bit of this cutting compound, which basically is just toothpaste, believe it or not. I usually started off on the co coarsest one first. Put a bit on like that. And go over. Just dab it around the lamp. As so. And then just work it round. Nice and gently. Making sure you're keeping it damp. Don't let it dry up. And just work like that. And then turn it over to the next grade. Work it on that. And I'll come back to you when I'm up to that stage. I've just given it a couple of minutes. You don't go too uh, like kind of aggressive on these. Then we'll wipe it off. They won't look fantastic straight away. I can guarantee that. You've just got to work at it a little bit. Just get the residue off. And what I tend to do, this is just my view of what I do on it. Don't don't uh, take my advice to 100%. Next stage, use a bit of teacup metallic. I've already showed this on many of my other videos. Just work a bit of that in, leave it, wait for it to dry, buff it off, and then just use any old-fashioned wax. I've got a two-stage one here, auto bright, uh, diamond bright stuff, and then we'll see how it comes out. So I'm just going to work that, take it into it now. Right, there we go. I've let the two-stage polish 
go off now and we'll just give it a little buff off. I mean, we're not expecting miracles because we haven't used like a power sander. But at the end of the day, when you use them powerful sanders, you either go to town big style on them or you don't bother at all with the, these little kits. I only ever use them if they're worth saving. And I'm just... We'll just have a look, see how that's come up. I think that's come up. Perfect. Compared to what they were like before, a tiny little bit at the top, but they're nowhere near as bad as what they were over the moon with that. So now it's going to pop the grill on. And depending on where the grill's over there, uh, depending on what time I've got, I might tackle the air conditioning. Hello and welcome back to Project Cherokee, but at the same time I'm going to do this a separate video of how to regas your own air conditioning. Sorry about the noise, this is a 3.7 V6 and it's got a, a, radi a, a viscous radiator fan, so there is quite a fair bit of noise uh, comes out of this thing. So, first thing you need to do is you need to switch, start, obviously, have it idling, have your air conditioning system switched on to full, so bring it over to the full, number four. This is a weird system. Most cars just have a push button, have it on cold, leave it at that. Now, on this car, this is your clutch here. Can you see this kicking in and out? Excuse the wind noise, it's the viscous fan. See how that isn't moving? Then it will kick in in a second. We'll just give it a few moments and it'll kick in. It's just as busy priming the system at the moment. There, see, kicks in. So now the system's gone. When you read the pressure on these gauges, you always read the pressure when the pump is kicked in. As you can see there, it says filled, but that's not right because the system isn't active. You need to wait. So every time the system becomes active, which since it's only six degrees there, you see, it'll drop down into low. So this obviously needs filled. So this is the cans you get. Make sure it's the right gas for your car. This is R134A, which it actually tells you on here. R134A, and it tells you this takes 0.6 kilograms. Now this bottle is 510. This system wasn't completely empty. It was just about empty. So what you need to do is, you just pull the trigger like this, but only do it when the pump is running, until this can is empty. But just do it in bursts of about 10 seconds but in this case every time the system kicks in like now pull the trigger tilt the, the bottle i'll just keep that on then let go as soon as the compressor stops again so as you can see that's how you run it i'm not gonna i'm i'm, I'm just gonna balance this here to keep it out the way of the fan and everything but that's basically how you do that and if you want any information on these systems i'll swing i'll get a bit of noise if you want any information on these, just give us a ring, let us know, leave a comment below or messages on Facebook. But that's how you can regas your own air conditioning systems, which saves you a fortune. So I'll come back to you on another video. Thanks for watching. Hit the comment, hit the like, comment, subscribe. Catch you next time. Bye.